Welcome to the Vogelsang High Cone Revolution. The history of progressing cavity pumps, a technology invented by Rene Moineau in the 1930s. This graphic represents a standard PC pump. The pump is driven by an electric motor and the speed is normally reduced via the gearbox that you see in the graphic. Typical operating speed is less than 300 RPM. The output shaft of the gearbox is connected to the drive shaft of the pump and sealed via gland packing or mechanical seal. The driven shaft is concentrically rotating and must drive the rotor head, which rotates eccentrically. This transition in motion is most often achieved via two articulated universal joints as represented here as a pin joint. The stator here is shown as a steel tube containing the elastomer and it's held in place and stationary via the tie rods which pull the suction and discharge housings together thus sandwiching the stator in between the stator is compressed internally by the insertion of the metal rotor that creates a sealing line the rotor rotates within the stator forming the cavity that the liquid enters this elastomer compressed sealing line maintains the shape and volume of the cavity and prevents backflow or slip of the liquid towards the pump suction housing, making the flow proportional to RPM. So if you double the speed, you double the flow. Now that you've viewed the past history, you're about to see how Vogelsang is breaking with convention and making history. Progressing cavity pump technology perfected. Fuglesang, leading in technology. Brilliant. So, how does the high cone technology work? Instead of replacing the rotor and stator after erosion of the contact surfaces, the Vogelsang high cone allows us to advance the cone shaped rotor into the mated cone shaped stator by simply rotating a simple adjusting nut. This provides renewed compression of the stator elastomer against the rotor. This is accomplished without changing the shape of the cavity or deforming the sealing line. The benefit is that the same flow and pressure is achieved as when the pump was new. This is a comparison between making adjustments when the high cone is run to fail, represented by the curved uh, gray line, versus making adjustments when the pump capacity is at 20% of desired flow at the rated RPM per the performance curve represented by the red lines. Making more frequent adjustments significantly improves the lifespan of the wear components as a result. Standard stators require replacement after the first gray line interval, shown here. Why customers demand the excellence of high cone technology? You no longer have to settle for inferior technology. Vogelsang High Cone has six points of excellence which provide our customers with a product they deserve reliability 
safety, consistency, simplicity, maintenance friendly, and long-term cost savings. On the reliability side, Vogelsang uses the most durable universal joint available on every high cone pump, the carbon joint. It's superior in every way and perfectly matched with the high cone product. Our proven quality cartridge seal incorporates a liquid field and pressurized zone, ensuring that the seal faces remain lubricated and free of contamination. Third, the three wire PT100 temperature probe is utilized for recognizing elevated temperature of the stator from friction, allowing shutdown of the pump prior to dry run damage. Safety. It's important to leave nothing to chance. Vogelsang high cone stators are of a single piece design with the elastomer molded into a single continuous tube. This eliminates potential of leaking under load or even if the discharge piping has been completely plugged. Competitors adjustment systems rely on having a split component design, which risks the escape of liquids, which can be biohazardous or chemically aggressive. You can see the continuous tube here. Consistency. The conical shape of the rotor and stator geometry ensures that the cross section of the cavity remains the same and that the sealing line is uniform throughout the life of these components. The competition uses different methodologies of crushing the exterior of the stator elastomer towards the center of the stator. This method reduces the cavity volume, creates an irregular sealing line, which both results in reduced flow per RPM and a degraded pressure resistance. The change in the sealing line promotes, also promotes microjetting, which can exacerbate wear and premature failure. Simplicity. To renew the fit or compression of the rotor by the stator is as easy as turning a wrench. First stop the pump, then by turning the adjusting nut, you advance the visible indicator across the scale, which is represented as a value of zero to 100. 100 represents 100% of adjustment remaining, and zero indicates that there is no adjustment remaining at all. This takes the guesswork out of adjusting. Maintenance friendliness. After the rotor and stator have demonstrated to be completely worn, you replace both at the same time. This removal consists of three steps. First, unfasten the bolts located at both the inclined flange and the intermediate flange and lift upward on the inclined flange. From there, you will see the retention nut. Second step is to unthread the retentioning nut that is connected to the tie rod connecting the entire uh, works to the internal tie rod inside of the drive train. Third, lift away the rotor and stator. The removal of the gearbox and motor from the pump is just as easy and provides access to the mechanical seal. Long-term savings. The wear life of conventional PC pumps are at a two to one ratio, basically meaning that two stator replacements to every worn rotor. This is represented above by the curves in gray. Overlapping this are the red curves, which represent the adjustment of the high cone throughout the span of its life lifetime. Uh, using this example, the customer will replace four stators and two rotors over the same span of time that the high cone must have its first rotor and stator change here. So essentially you've replaced a single stator a stator and a rotor, a single stator, and then a stator and rotor, and there's still slightly uh, more lifespan remaining for the high cone before you have to replace the first rotor and stator. This provides an excellent value proposition for the high cone that doesn't even address the maintenance hours required for frequent replacements and reduced uptime. Evolution of a revolution. High cone advancements will continue through 2024 in the form of the automatic and autonomous versions. Customers will experience a level of cost savings through reduction of electricity usage, smaller horsepower motors, and VFDs.
There will also be the possibility of controlling every aspect of the pump operation as well as predictive adjustments and increased efficiency, shown here, manual, automatic, and autonomous. The high cone by Vogel saying, the first pump you should choose and the last pump that you will ever need.